Hey tribe, welcome to HGDC, HD Designs Crochet. I'm Heather and this is my channel all about crochet. <laughs> I'm a crochet designer and my favourite thing to make is the granny square, of which I have a lot of them to show you. And today we are going to do the month in review for September, because September is nearly done. By the time you see this it will actually be October and that's a bit crazy because this year has just flown by and I'm not sure what I feel about that right now. So I have got finished objects, I've got works in progress, I've got updates on my own patterns, I also have updates about the HGDC hub, I've also got um, a few bits and bobs to show you, just so much good stuff, I'm just looking at it all spread out around me. Um, and I've also got some highs and some lows of the month as being a crochet designer and also a cal or a make along, crochet along, knit along that I am part of as well. So, shall we dive in? <laughs> if you're brand new here, then you are most welcome. Hi, hello and welcome to HD Designs Crochet. And if you are returning, hey tribe, what's good, what's happening? I hope that you're all good wherever you are in your part of the world. Here in this part of the world, the United Kingdom, it is grey, raining, but it's not that cold and I could potentially take this jumper off and still like feel warm enough. So that's a little bit bizarre, especially with it almost being October and it should be like sweater weather, candles on. So we've got the gloom, but we don't have the out and out cold. Hmm. Okay, so, finished objects. Whew. Last month I did a bumper one which covered July and August because I hadn't been very well in July and so I had like a backlog of things to show you and I was just getting myself back to rights. And then this month I have been working on getting projects finished so that I can um, call for testers and I've actually got three patterns with testers at the moment. I've got quite a few finished objects to show you. Um, some of them you probably saw as works in progress or very nearly finished, like half finished. Are they called FOES or something? There's, a, there's an acronym for half finished objects. Hmm, don't know what it is, but basically you will have seen most of these last month. And now they're finished, so let's jump in. First up, we have got this one. It's one of my patterns, and it's Granny Square Slippers, and they're called Snugs. Now, I showed you these in, it wasn't in my July review, it was in the last vlog I put up, which was me making samples and um, just showing you a little bit of the process of getting my patterns out to testers and onto the next stages. And um, this is a design that, popped into my mind because at the start of September we did have a, like a week of quite cold gloomy autumnal weather and then the sun came back and completely threw us all off like completely threw a loop <sighs> so because I had this idea true to form I sat there and did it all in one go but the good thing about it is is I graded it there and then before I even started I listened to my own advice I wrote out my own design specification which is what I tell you is the best thing to do in the HDDC workbook and I actually did it <laughs> because I'd fallen into a really bad rut of just diving into a pattern thinking yes this will work spending like a day doing it or even longer and then it not working and um, I actually did that with an entire granny square vest and I hadn't graded it properly I just sort of jumped in and winged it and basically wasted all of that work <sighs> and I was so annoyed at myself because I know that happened and it's not it's not efficient it's not effective um, so I actually drew out the design specification for these and graded them made them and then I also took the pictures as I made them. To be fair, it helps that there's two because I had to make two, so I made one, and then when I did the second one, which is this one, 
I um, took the picture so that I could create the pictorial for the tutorial and they are so super snuggly. I've called them snugs because they are a snuggly slipper boot. They are um, formed of granny squares as you can see and then they are constructed together and then it is lined with this chunky velvet type yarn. And then at the top I decided to put this faux fur because I have a little bit of it left over from another project which I will show you in a minute. Um, so you create the lining separately and then you pop it inside and then you just attach the two. They are so warm and so, so snuggly and I know that these will be really greatly received as Christmas presents for a lot of people this year. Now, when I showed you them, I told you I'd gone to great painstaking lengths to make sure they matched and I was all smug until I turned them around. <laughs> And I caught my reaction on camera because I honestly thought they matched. And then as I was talking to you, I was like, hold on. <gasps> so yeah, but I'm really pleased with them. They're with testers. Um, there's three sizes. This is the medium size. So I've done a um, eight inch, nine inch and 10 inch foot circumference. So the ball of your foot. But I've also put notes in there of how you can make it um, to fit the wearer. So maybe you've got a slightly wider foot, slightly shorter or whatever it is, then you can modify it because that's the beauty of making handmade. You make it fit yourself. So I've done that and they, as I said, being tested at the moment, I'm starting to see some snugs being finished. They're so quick to make that, um, yeah really really pleased with this one really really pleased i'm holding off wearing them i felt like i saw an end them i'm holding off wearing them because i wanted to keep them quite nice um i want to take a few more pictures before they are released i know that i'll be making some reels to show them off and i just didn't want them to be like just a bit gross from walking around in them i can't wait to wear them they're so gorgeous and snuggly and of course, I've gone with the um, three round granny square joined with glitter black. It's my favourite combination. And for a long, long time, I did feel like I should mix it up to have like a different joining colour and things like that. Because how many times can you see the same granny squares and enjoy it? But in actual fact, every time I make a project that uses 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 the black glitter is joining with the different colors they're all different because of the different colors using the granny squares and the different patterns i am making so this is the first one snugs i know the date that these should be coming out and it is a lot lot sooner than than you might think um so that means that you can make these as gifts for a lot of people not only for yourself but friends and family i also made another granny square project which is this one this is called toasty and it's the similar principle this is actually the one that came first so i wanted a hand cozy that would keep my hands warm when i'm out and about in the winter whether it be dog walking or something a bit more fancy and so I wanted the granny square panel and I lined it in the chunky and then I put the faux fur trim. It would also be really nice if you did the faux fur the entire way around. It would be, yeah, that would be really nice and soft and snuggly. I am trying to use up my stash and so I just used what I've got. Um, in case you didn't know, no, we'll talk about that after. We'll talk about that after. So I actually made this cosy and it's called Toasty. Again, it's already with testers. I absolutely love it. And um, it's really simple to put together. It's granny squares, it's got the lining and it's got the trim. But when I had this and my hands are in it, I was like, this would be really nice for my feet. Enter Snugs stage left. So yeah, I'm really, really pleased. And what I love about them is Okay, it's granny squares, three round granny squares, multicoloured, and yes, they're lined in black, but look how different they are. Absolutely loved them. Both being tested, 
both should be with you a lot sooner than you realise. We put these out the way. Another one that I finished yesterday is this one. This is a granny square bag that I have made. It's called Icon. It's a mini version of Iconic with a few differences. So not only is it smaller, but rather than having the lock at the front, it has a magnetic clasp, which I'll show you. So the top part is there and it's there. And um, I also chose to do the construction slightly differently and it's just so cute i'm so pleased with it that's what it looks like on the inside it's really sturdy and you can fit a lot in this bag i think i'm gonna make a reel like what's inside my bag and show you just how much you can get in here let me show you what it looks like wearing it i purposely wore a light jumper because i have so much black to show you today It's so cute. It's the perfect size. I absolutely adore it. Really, really pleased with this one. Um, I mentioned that I had different construction methods. So let's just run th through those. Rip. Let's just run through those very quickly. On Iconic, I made the top of the bag, this panel here, separate and then attached it to the back and the flap. But I actually just made one big piece that swoops over. Now, it has pros and cons of doing both ways, but I am actually quite pleased with how this has worked out. I also have the magnetic clasp rather than the lock. Um, it's a lot easier to install, they're a lot cheaper and I think it does look very neat as well. Um, and then rather than crochet the panels together I did choose to sew them together with a needle and thread. The reason being is I did find it quite difficult on Iconic to go through with the crochet hook so I decided to try with needle and thread and I feel like it's made it that much more like structurally sound so I'm really really pleased with that. I am waiting for um, a good weather day so that I can take some photos and then this one will be released. I don't think I'm going to get it tested because um, the similar similarities to Icon means that I know that it will work and that I can explain the differences sufficiently enough with photos to make it okay. Um, this is going to get a lot of use from me. Um, I've got date night Friday night tomorrow night and I'm taking this bag um, because I'm an EpiPen carrier no matter where I go if it's going to be around other people or food then I need to have my EpiPens with me and so this is like the perfect cute size and then I generally tend to have a larger bag that's a project bag with me so this is all of my stuff like keys, phone, all of those things that I need to keep safe and secure and then yeah it's just perfect. I chose the D-rings again and the um, handle to be in gunmetal black to match the um, magnetic clasp that I put in. And I'm really, really happy with the finish. So, let me know what you think to this. It's called Icon. I showed you the handle before, I'm pretty sure of it. But it's got this leather bit at the top in black. Gonna wear that on tomorrow night. So that's three finished objects, and then I would have had five. Mm. And then it hit a few boo-boos. Hmm. To be fair, I had um, intended to have these two that I'm about to show you finished before I'd finished Icon, but didn't quite go to plan and so I regrouped and I decided to finish Icon so that at least I did have some good stuff to show you and now we're going to go into works in progress and I'm going to show you 
the ones that are so very nearly close but just just aren't there. First one is this one. Again, glitter black with the three round granny squares and this one is a jumper. And I do adore it, I do love it. And actually, it's been in time out and now I've picked it up, I'm like, this does need finishing. Um, I've had many requests for an all over granny square jumper, which is this. And I actually started this last November, so almost a year ago, or maybe even be before that. And I'd hoped to uh, release it last November. Um, and I picked it up to finish it because I'm actually part way through, I've just started a major yarn D stash. So a lot of this yarn that's behind me, I've pledged to get it used up. And one of the most logical things to do was to finish a lot of languishing whips and patterns and get them out there. Um, so I picked this one up to get it finished and all I needed to do was to finish the neckline and like the cuffs and the hem. And I tried it on when it was finished and I just wasn't happy with it and I know that <sighs> I wanted to make a change to the design but when I tried it on and realised that I did cry, I did cry because I've been like being very very intentional and cautious with what I put my energy into because I had Covid um, in July and it still it's left me with a bit of fatigue and like breathlessness and things like that which have been impacting day day to day so intentionally I've been picking projects that I know that I can get done and see them through um, and it doesn't mean this isn't going to get done it's just when I tried it on and I knew that I needed to take it apart it just upset me because I was like how long is that going to take me Definitely made worse by the fact that I've woven in all the ends on the granny squares and the granny square panels um, And I can't remember Where the start and where the end is so basically I'm gonna have to go at it with scissors and try and undo it Yeah <laughs> But it's okay I know what changes I want to make to it. It's a very simple change to make once I've got the garment taken apart um, the sleeves were added not that long ago, so they will come off easily. There's no changes to be made to them. It's just the body. I want to change the shoulder shaping so that the neck sits differently because I, the way I've designed it, it sits the same height at the back and the front. So it sits nicely at the back, but at the front, it leans against your neck. And I, I just, for this design, it's not what I wanted. So... I did post about it on Instagram and I had some really lovely people like reach out and say, I had designers and makers say it happens to all of us, um, keep persevering with it, I had loads of suggestions of ways that I could change it, some I hadn't even thought of and that actually I might incorporate in future designs but I think it's just one of the one of those times where you just needed to put it in time out and so I did and um, yeah it's on my list now to take apart so had the neckline been okay this would have been a finished object and it actually would have been going out to be tested but never mind I still absolutely adore it and I know that I'll get a lot of wear out of this one so that's gonna like really push me to finish it I've just noticed those two squares should not be together now I get a lot of questions on how I pick the colors for my granny squares and I said I'd make a video on it but in all honesty I haven't because I don't really know that I've got enough to make an entire video. What I do when I pick um, colours for granny squares is I have my big tub of yarn so you can see it there the biggest one it's got most of my DK yarn in it I have it next to me and then what I do is I pull out a colour and say for example it's a light colour like this blue then I'll go with a dark color next to it so I always go light and dark sometimes I go completely contrasting and sometimes I go for ones that are very complementary and maybe run in all of the shades so like that one's really complementary and I have a few more let's see if I can find one like I would do like pink and pink or 
red and red or lilac and purple so that it was very complimentary and I might have a couple to show you it's not like I'm not surrounded by granny squares here we go as you can see on this one it's pink and pink so I always go light and dark it doesn't matter if the dark is in the center or the outside I just try to have a good blend of them and then I also will go with contrasting and I will go with complementary. So light and dark, and then you go complementary, contrasting, and make sure that you have of the two. Say you go light and dark, then you can always swap it so that you've got the darker color on the outside for some and the lighter color on the inside for some. For example, I've got quite a few of them that have got um, turquoise as the outer color, but then I've also put it in the inner color and as well like i said i do light and dark but it doesn't mean that you have to have a pale shade and then a, a stronger shade i've got a lighter yellow and then a darker blue there so that's that's my main rules and that's how i have a play around and i literally just have the big tub of yarn there and i'll just pull them out and then what i do when i'm batch creating is for example i will pull out the turquoise and um usually i know roughly how many squares i'm going to need so say I need 100 squares, then I will pick out maybe 20 um, colours and say that each one of them, I'm going to try and have the outer colour of five of each. Does that work? My math skills might have failed at that point. That does work, doesn't it? Um, and then what I would do is I will make five squares where turquoise is on the outside and then I'll pick up, I'll go through each colour and then what I'll also do is I'll make sure that um, that turquoise is in the centre of some of the colours. Not necessarily five of them because my other rule when it comes to putting them together is not to have two colours touching. And the reason I do that is because then it gives you the really random put together look that you can see here and that I like in all of my projects. So what I do when I'm placing my granny squares, for example, this one here is a neutral and a brown, and then I've got pinks either side, but they are actually all different shades. That one is fluorescent, that one's darker, and that one's in the middle. Um, but then I make sure that within like a block radius, so I make sure that this center color is not in any of the surrounding squares so those three those three and those two so the surrounding eight squares within the nine square block it shouldn't have that color in the center and then i also make sure that that outer edge isn't repeated within the same nine block as well and if you do that on each square then it basically means that you get this random put together look now, as you can see here, I've got two whites, but they differ. That one has glitter in it, which is really blowing out. There we go. And then this one doesn't. So again, that's an exception that I allow. And by making sure that none of the colors touch within the nine square block, um, it works really well. And it means that you get that really random, like spread out look. Now I've actually um, not followed through with it on this nine square block as you can see so I've got the turquoise on the outer edge here the inner there and the inner there and to be honest is a little bit too much turquoise within that little block but because this is going to be such a big project we can get away with it the reason I do that is because when your eye then looks it's picking out the same colors and I don't want it to like think that this this piece is more turquoise than any other colour. I want there to be a really even spread. So that's what I do on any granny square project like this. And when you go into three rounds, it just means that, again, you make sure none of the first, second or third rounds are like repeated um, in the same position within the nine block radius. So because that is a third colour, on this one it can't be the third colour on any of the other eight around it and then you just do it in all directions 
Um, it does mean that I lay out all of my squares before I start joining. I don't just pick a mix into the bag because I need to ensure that it's all going to work and there's nothing worse than when you get to the very end and you, and the colours are oh, so annoying. So I do lay them all out flat beforehand um, and then I have systems of joining. So what I tend to do, like you can see now, I have them all spread out. I have them all spread out on just like a lid of one of the yarn tubs or on a table, whatever. I prefer the lid because I can move that around with me and keep it out of the way of Albie. And then that just means that um, I know which square is coming next. And I always, because I like the black glitter as the joining colour, I always do the continuous join as you go. So all of this is joined with the continuous join as you go, which just means that rather than at the end of each square cutting the black and starting the next one, you just carry on into the next one. Now my other rule is, is that you have to weave the ends as you go. So once I've finished the squares that you've seen laid out, I will weave in the ends on this um, before I add any more. I've learnt the hard way in the past where I've done like an entire king size blanket and not woven in one single edge, one single end. It just becomes too much, becomes too daunting, you don't enjoy it. And you know what? Ends don't actually take that long anyway. Like I will ring one of my grandmothers when I'm weaving in ends and let them chat away. And before you know it, after an hour of catching up with them, you've done a serious amount of ends. Um, if you really hate ends, there's other people out there that have got like tutorials and reels that show you how to like crochet them in as you go. Um, there's people out there that will do it for you and honestly I just find putting an audio book on or ringing one of my grandmothers, I get loads done and then I put all my ends in a jar, so yes. Um, so the jumper needs the neckline changing, hopefully I'll have that done and show you next month and then I also made a skirt to go with it, which is here. So this skirt is called Victory. And um, what I did is I put granny squares together. The front looks very straight and regular, but in the back I've actually added in additional granny squares. Can you see where it puckers? So that it would fit around your bum and like stretch to the contours of a body. Um, and I'm really pleased with it. And I decided to take the elastic band off because I wanted to make it neater. And when I did that, I also added in um, more joins. So originally I had blanket stitched around the outside every inch or half inch or something and I basically doubled it so I added in extra and then when I did it meant that I'd done it so tight that although the elastic can stretch the granny squares just don't have the give to stretch with it and I realised where I've made my mistake um, and it's in the size of the elastic I've cut because I didn't stick to the standard sizing. I have a waist that is two sizes smaller than my bum and I wanted it to have a really close fit, even though this is a sample. And so rather than cut the standard size that the sample calls for, I cut the waist a little bit, the elastic, a little bit smaller that would be more suited to me because I'm across the two sizes. And because I've done that, it's not got enough give to then go over my hips. So um, I'm going to make a slightly larger waistband and add that on and then again that's another one that is then finished and I can call for testers. I could call for testers now anyway but I wanted to take photos. So yeah, two very nearly, very very closely finished, very very close to being finished. Um, originally I was going to do the jumper and the skirt as a set. But now I'm thinking of giving the jumper a completely different name. I just haven't thought of one yet. Um, I'm not likely to wear them together, but there's the option to wear them together because they have the same gauge and the same um, colour scheme of random grannies and the black glitter to join. Um, but they also make really great separates. So this looks great with like a t-shirt or a jumper and then the top looks really good with jeans. So yes. Two more works in progress to show you, one of which is granny squares, chuck. So it's this one that I've already held up. 
um, part way through this row. And I've got a bag of them here as well. There was a lot more, but obviously now I'm joining them. There's not as many. And so that's gonna need topping up. Um, some of which I have woven in a lot of the ends, but what I, originally what I was gonna do is make all of the granny squares, weave all the ends in and then join it all together. But I decided that um, I'm gonna save some of the granny square making because sometimes I just want to make granny squares and do nothing else. And so if I save it for the days that I want to do that, then I have a project to legit make them for. And I do enjoy the joining as you go. So I'm going to join all of this section and then weave in the ends and then make another batch of granny squares. Some of the ends are woven in because as I said, I made a huge amount that was in this bag. And what I did is with my method, I picked out some key colours that I wanted to be the outer edge which you can see now I've got multiple of the same colour so loads of the pink there's loads of the lilac there's loads of the navy loads of orange and loads of brown and that's because I was there with my tub and I was like right I'm going to make 20 squares that I've got brown as the outer edge and then I just picked different colours to go in the centre and I did that with each of the colours I had because originally I was going to do all of the squares. I thought I'll make as many of them in like the colour as possible. Um, but then because I've now decided to start joining a little bit earlier, I needed to mix in different colours um, so that it looked more spread out and so I could join them because otherwise these colours, the brown, would be in the nine block repeat too many times and break my rule. So that is why there are so many ends to weave in because I picked out random outer edge colours such as the peach, such as the coral, um, such as the turquoise, such as the red and made some to be mixed in there. I'm not worried about running out of any colours or something not being used at a later time and I'm not worried about there being duplicates either so there are a couple of duplicates but because of the size of this blanket um, I can put this one in another section way way up here and you probably won't even realise that there's duplicates so this is going to be a long term project um, I would like it finished in the next couple of months but it's something that I'm just dipping in and out of as opposed to going full steam ahead to get finished. It's a really nice one that I can work on when like, we're watching TV in the evening because it doesn't require a lot of concentration from me. I've already got the granny squares laid out and made a load. And also making granny squares is so much fun. And then I've got another work in progress. Very, very new. <laughs> um, this is the start of it. So this is bulky yarn and what I've used is double knit in black and then scrap yarn held double and I am creating a design. I'm creating a sample for a design that I have. Why can't I get that to sound right? I'm creating a sample for a pattern that I have designed and um, I've actually filled out my design specification. I have swatched for this and then I have started it and I'm taking very careful notes as I go along. Um, for a little while, I'm not gonna lie, I just wanted to just dive into crochet and not swatch and not keep notes and things like that. And it just meant that when it got to writing up the pattern, it was so, so difficult and I'd made it so hard for myself and I'd in some cases like tripled the work and when I did snugs, when I made my snugs, because I graded them beforehand, I had my swatch, I had my design specification, I took pictures as I went along, it was so so easy to write them up and send them out for testers, whereas for some of the other patterns, there's certain techniques that I just didn't take pictures of and certain stages I didn't take pictures of and I now kind of need to go back and try and do that or get a tester to do it and that's just 
awkward like why would you make it harder for yourself i was so in the zone i wanted to get on with the crochet that i then kind of made the pattern almost unusable which is just it's no good no good so this one i have swatched and i'm really pleased with it and i've decided to try and use up as many scraps as possible i have a bag up there it's just full of scraps it's like full of abandoned whips random bits of yarn i've gotten all tangled and so all of this so far has come out of there and then the black i have a lot of this that's in that bag there um and i have made a sweater or a jumper using this technique before but i held four ply and scraps so i used black four ply and then i used um scrap in double knit and you could alt you could switch it around so you could have um the four ply as the scraps and the black as the dk but on this one i chose to go with bulky so double knit held together and i'm really pleased with it so far i'm really excited to show you this one it's very very early days but i just love the scrap effect so that is all of my finished objects and all of my works in progress um that I'm showing you at the moment. There's a couple more works in progress. I'm just holding them back um, <laughs> just until they are done. Some of them because I've shown you before and said, yeah, I'll be done soon. And then like a year later, it's not. And others just because um, I quite enjoy having the ta-da moment when you've not seen anything. So that's where we're at but two more really cool things to share with you um that are yarn related and one of them is that i taught a workshop at yarndale and the other one is um that i'm taking part in a stash cal mal one of the two both stash tober I had the privilege of teaching a workshop at Yarndale 2021 and this is the project that we made during that workshop. This bag is called Hope and it has got its own hardware, it's got magnetic clasps and it's got its own chain and it's also made out of t-shirt yarn. At Yarndale I put together the kit so we had the pattern, the crochet hooks, the yarn and the chains and the d-rings and the clasp and everything so that those that chose to sign up could make their own bag and I also took different colours of yarn so there was a pink um more pink than this because this is quite neon there was also a um khaki green which is absolutely gorgeous there was a cream colour and then there was black and I went with black thinking that maybe more people would want a bag that would go with more things and then actually I didn't think about how most makers have a huge aversion to making anything in black so nobody picked that colour at all um, and then I provided the handle as well for so this one I chose to go with like this corally pink colour because it suits the yarn that I've used so well but because there was different yarn colours available, I decided to go with something much more neutral and versatile. And so I provided them with this one instead. It is a clear white, I would say it's clear, but it's obviously not see-through, um, chain. And that goes with pretty much any colour you could imagine. It was my first time teaching a workshop in person and I really did enjoy it. It was really good fun to prepare everything and put it all together and get the pattern written up. I mean, that writing up the pattern, I'm used to that. I've got so many patterns myself. Um, but just figuring out how I was going to deliver that in person, that was a different element that I've not had before. Um, and then I had everything ready and prepped to go the day before. And then on the day, uh, ran into some traffic, got lost. So that was quite a stressful start to the day. And in all honesty, 
I had originally said yes to Yarndale thinking that Brad and I would stay overnight um, but actually his twin had arranged to go and hike a mountain in Scotland that weekend and I just knew that although Brad would come with me that he would really feel like he was missing out on that weekend and I just didn't have the heart to be like you said you'd come with me so you're going with me so I was like go do your mountain with my blessing stay safe and I will sort your own deal now having had the experience I had I will definitely stay over the night before in future for anything like that so the drive should have been two and a half hours I think anything that's over two hours then I want to be staying over the night before because um as soon as I put it into the sat nav that morning it was already showing traffic and showing it was going to take longer and so in actual fact it took us four hours to get there and having had four hours of driving and then go straight into teaching that's quite a lot um and so I was absolutely exhausted and then I had a two and a half hour drive back it actually took us like two hours ten minutes to get back because the roads were quite clear and all of the speed limit things had been lifted and whatnot that we had driven through to get there. So, um, yeah, I definitely learned that um, in terms of logistics, I want to stay over so that I'm within the area, the town or city that the um, yarn festival or teaching is taking place. Had I stayed over the night before, then all I would need to do is get myself from my local accommodation to wherever I was teaching, which would have been like 15 minutes, half an hour max. Um, and then I wouldn't have had all of that before I'd even got there. Thankfully, Yarndale were really, really good. I couldn't get signal. That's the other thing that was really stressful. Um, I didn't have signals. I'm driving around and my phone's just not picking up signal. And even to the point where like the GPS on the Maps app was like just refreshing because it couldn't pick up signal. So when you're lost and then you can't get signal, that's really, really like, it's just not a good combination. Um, so I had to keep driving to try and get signal, but I didn't really know where I was. And the more I was going like backwards and forwards and down, like country lanes, some of them were like two miles long, single track roads. So there was no chance to like pull over and stop or turn around. Um, yeah, it all just really started to blur. So that was quite stressy, but my phone, I did see that I had a message come through from Instagram and I could see it on my notifications, but then when I tried to open Instagram, it wouldn't, it couldn't load it. I couldn't get onto my DMs. Um, but thankfully, because it had come through via business suite, Facebook business suite, um, I could see the number of, uh, the contact number for Kate. And so I called her off my mum's phone because my mum had come along for the ride. Um, so I gave her the number whilst I'm driving. Like we pulled over to get the number, put it in my mum's phone and whilst I'm trying to drive to get signal, she kept calling. We finally managed to leave a voicemail and then we managed to also receive a call back and um, sort out where we were going. Even though we had signal, for the phone call, it still took another couple of miles before the phone would pick up enough signal to do the GPS. So that was like, I think it just makes you realize how reliant you are on your phone. Like it doesn't matter where I am, as long as I've got my phone and it works, then I'm fine because I can access money, I can contact people, like I'll be fine. But when your phone doesn't work, <laughs> that was really, really not cool. Um, but thankfully Kate had, notified my workshop attendees that um basically i got stinking lost and so they were off wandering around yarndale enjoying the festival and looking at all the different yarn so when i got there they weren't just waiting for me because in my head i was like they're just going to be looking at the time getting like stressed but no everyone was really really lovely and one person rachel almost finished her bag as well whilst we were there so that was really cool um it actually worked out quite well for me because because I'm on a big yarn D stash I don't need any more yarn so I hadn't put myself on a hard band but I was really hoping that I would be able to come away without purchasing anything I know that sounds completely backwards but the only reason I was at Yarndale was to teach the workshop and looking at the stalls was the bonus um, 
And because I got there later than expected, I didn't get any time to look around before I got there. And then I did the teaching and then I stayed right until the end of Yarndale to give the workshop attendees the time that they had actually been given. Um, so originally the workshop was supposed to finish at like half three, but I stayed right, right up until five. Um, yeah, right up until five so that they would get the slotted hours. And because Yarndale was supposed to shut at five, as soon as we packed up, I beelined and went and saw Siobhan Crafts because I knew that she'd made Revival. And not only was she wearing Revival, but so was her brother and her mum, Hazel and Matt. I think it's her mum and her brother. And um, yeah, that was so, so lovely. So I got a picture of that um, and I quickly got to look at her yarn, but I was like just so, so exhausted that I didn't even have it in me to have like a good look and think, oh, what shall I get? So actually being late almost did me a favour because I did come out of Yarndale having not purchased any yarn. Um, I'm not quite sure how I managed that, but there we go. Like I just didn't really have the time, so. Um, but it did mean that I didn't really get to walk around and have a look at anything else, which that was a shame. I would have loved to have done that. And it meant that I didn't take any footage at all. Um, my mum took a few photos and that's all I've got. So I have hopefully put them in now for you to see. But one thing that I have pledged to myself is that um, Yarndale for next year, they've already posted the dates. So what I'm doing is I've got a separate account within HGDC's bank account. And within that monthly, I'm putting a little bit of money away. And then this time next year, when I go to Yarndale, I will have a designated budget to get some yarn. And most of this would have been used up anyway. Um, and if I'm to teach at any festival again, then I'll make sure that I am in the local area the night before. Um, to be honest, like with seven hours driving, almost seven hours driving and the, few, the three or so hours of teaching, I was absolutely shattered and spent the whole of Sunday on the sofa. Like I barely moved and um, I had been considering on the Thursday whether I should cancel it or not because I've been really battling with fatigue. Some days it's so heavy that I literally just barely move off the sofa or out of bed and then other days, like it's there and it's heavy but I can get things done like maybe take Albie for his walk and get some work done and then maybe have a nap and get a bit more work done and have an early night. And then on the really heavy days, that's just not possible. So Thursday I was really like, should I just cancel because how am I going to manage that drive? And I'm glad I didn't cancel, but I'm really, really hoping that this time next year, like, fatigue isn't a thing for me and that I would just, yeah, that would be really sad if I'm still feeling like this next year. Please God, don't let that be. So that was Yarndale. It was really, really good fun though. And um, I just know that I learned so, so much from teaching. So, so much, just prep and logistics and finances and oh my gosh, so, so good. Um, I, I would like to put that into a mini module for the HDDC hub. So the HDDC hub is for crochet and knitwear designers. Um, and it's actually taking shape at the moment in a slightly different format to what I'd previously told you. So before my plan was to um, publish a series of like workbooks and now I've actually made the decision to make that into um, more of an interactive platform. So that's going to be hosted on Teachable. And what I'm going to do is the grading that I've already done, that is a standalone um, workbook. But the next one that I'd started working on, which was how to launch your pattern and how to market it, um, I've written up the most of that, but I've also got a load of supporting videos to go with it. And then um, what you do is you work your way through and then it's more interactive in that you're watching, you download the supporting materials, you go and do that bit. It also means that you will have a progress bar. So. Rather than just having like a, a big workbook to go through, it's going to be like you're 20% through, you are 25% through, you're 40% through. So you'll really see the progress that you're like making. 
There's also going to be the Facebook group to go with it so that you can speak to other designers um, and then also the supporting emails. So I'm really, really excited for that. And I'm definitely going to put a little module in there that's um, prepping for a workshop. So all these different considerations like um, the cost of materials, the cost of materials, um, organisation, all those types of things that I picked up. I can just put that in a little um, module and hopefully that will help somebody else if it's their first time workshop because we've all got to start somewhere. <laughs> And alongside like the how to market your pattern, so testing, um, tech editing, or tech editing, testing, and then platforms to put it on, how to write up your pattern, all those different things. Um, I also want to put in like productivity, so ways to organize your time, how to be more efficient. I also want to um, add in finances, so how to manage your finances that from the income that you generate from your crochet or knitting and the best way to set up your bank account and things like that so that is actually really enjoyable to work on i love teaching and i love putting all of that information together so there'll be more on that coming soon um and that then puts us into the stashed hober I was asked by Crochet Luna, Claudia of Crochet Luna, if I wanted to join in on Stashtober. It's a crochet along, make along, knit along that she's hosting with um, a load of other designers. I'll put their names all on the screen. And um, the rules are, in essence, you pick one of the designer's patterns and you use your stash to get it done. It's running from the 1st of October till the end of October. And I was like, yes sign me up yes please because i am trying to reduce down like over 22 kilos of this yarn um ready for when i move into my garden office next year and there's some really really good patterns in there as well i'm gonna record an entirely separate video which which goes through all of the designers and all of the patterns available um and i'm gonna like tell you which ones are my favorites which ones i am thinking about making um, and also, I felt like it was really good timing because I also started this stash buster as well. Um, it won't be ready to do in the October, but I figured that you could start saving up your scraps and this could be a good one to continue with after Stashtober. So yeah, check that out. It's all on Instagram and then also I'll link below a few different resources because I know there's been various blog posts and various vlogs about it and also I'm going to vlog about it as well. The next thing I wanted to cover is the highs and lows of this month. Something that I um, wanted to share just to be more transparent um, what it's like being a crochet designer and also one that is full-time self-employed um, because it does have its ups, it does have its downs. So let's start with the low point because then we can end on a high um positivity y'all <laughs> i think the low point for me has been more health wise and then that's obviously had a huge impact on hddc so the low has been fatigue and um just not feeling myself and not being as productive as i would like to be and having to take that day by day some days I can get loads done and then I possibly won't get anything done for the next couple of days. Sometimes I'll get a row of a few good days and then I might need a day of rest and other times it's just days and days of brain fog and fatigue and it's not even a tired that sleep fixes. It is a bone tired the whole way through and you have no choice but to just lie down and you can't focus on anything you can't do anything and it's so so infuriating and also it just drags you down because like you end up choosing do i want to shower today or do i want to put the hoover around um shall i empty the bin or shall i put the shopping away and i know i don't live alone so it's not all on me it's not all on me i don't live alone i have support but the things that i would have done pre-covid sometimes just seem completely out of reach 
and that has had a huge impact on HDDC because not only during the time that I was ill was I not working and I wasn't creating patterns and so everything had come to a standstill which meant that basically I've not really had any income coming in um, it also then meant that for future patterns they were all stored as well now the beauty of having an online business is I can work from anywhere and also that I can have sales at any time so I had some really really amazing people that purchased everything in my shop just so that I would still have income coming in which that's an amazing amazing thing to do and I'm really grateful for that and I've also had quite a few pattern sales ticking along considering I haven't put out any new patterns I've put out one new pattern this year now I know that's not all down to COVID some of that is down to not being very well at the end of last year now if you remember at the end of last year around this time I started to get ill whilst I was at my previous job and I went through a huge huge period of burnout which basically accumulated into me making the decision to quit that job and then at the start of the year I moved home I changed my job and I also got a puppy so in terms of being productive maybe not as much as I could be because I had health home and a new pup all to deal with and looking back now I can definitely see why I maybe didn't get as much done as I thought I would and I really had started to get into my stride over this summer and then to get ill It's bad enough having COVID and that stretch of fatigue, but when you then combine it with the fact that at the start of the year, I also had um, burnout and a few health issues and that accumulated in me handing in my notice, becoming full-time self-employed, um, recovering whilst moving house and having a new puppy. And yeah, like it's been a lot. And so productivity and income wise, it hasn't been as high this year as I would have liked. And it's definitely had a knock on impact because of COVID and the lasting fatigue. Not only have I then had the, the actual, so not only then was I ill for like eight weeks before I really got back on my feet, but then it's still having an impact now. So that is really, really hard to juggle and really quite hard to like, deal with day to day because um yeah that has been hard to deal with and it's an ongoing thing um I don't know how long it is going to go on for but then on the other hand the high of this month has been that I can work from anywhere and at any time so I made the decision to go and teach at Yarndale which was also a high of this month because I knew that if I needed to take a few days in the week to recover that I could do because I pick my own schedule I pick my own hours it's also um been really great to see that even though I haven't put any more patterns out I'm still making sales and that I'm still seeing a steady trickle of income coming in day by day week by week month by month and obviously now that we're heading towards winter, people are starting to think about what they want to make as well, which helps. Um, and also that I have sent three patterns to be tested this month as well. And that feels like a huge, huge achievement because this time last month, all I could think about was how I was going to get through the next hour and what I needed to do that would best serve me in that hour, whether that be... Um, to take a nap or prepare food or sleep because that was basically my existence um, to now be at a point where I can take Albie out for a walk in the morning and then get some work done and have three patterns being tested <sighs> thank you that feels really really good and knowing that once these patterns go out it's adding to my pattern bank which means that if something like this happens in the future there's more patterns there for people to find which means I'm going to have more income coming in and that is a really reassuring thought that in the midst of Covid when it was absolutely vile and I honestly th thought I'd end up in hospital um, I was still seeing sales go through so I still knew that at, at the very least there would be enough for food that month which 
that's an incredible feeling because I know a lot of people out there, if they're suffering with fatigue, they don't have another way to produce that income. So I'm so, so grateful for that. Um, and that's why savings are important as well. I am loving that more and more patterns are going out to be tested because it means I can fill up my folder. And it also, a high of this month is that I have started to design again. And um, again, that's something that I thought would be a long way off. When I was really ill, I didn't even crochet or knit for almost three weeks, which is so unusual for me to even go half a day without crocheting or knitting is unusual. So to go three weeks, I think, tells you how ill I was without me being able to show it in any other way. Um, and I've had designs in my mind as well, which is where Snugs and Toasty came from, and there's more coming through. So that feels good. I really feel like, um, yeah, I feel like I'm on my way. And hopefully with a steady, hopefully, I can keep that at a steady trickle because even at a trickle that's still moving forward and that means that there's a couple of patterns coming out every month which means in a year's time I will have had like 24 patterns extra on my website and that that's just hugely reassuring to think that worst case something bad happens then I've got those there that I can run a sale on or you know that's just it's just a nice feeling it really is. I don't need to leave the house or trade my time for money if I don't want to. <sighs> okay, so that's everything yarn related that I wanted to tell you. I uh, don't really feel like we need a general chitter chatter this month. So basically, I'm going to say thank you so, so much for watching. Um, and that I'll see you next month in October. I've got a couple of things planned in October like events which means that I need different outfits so there's a few things on my hook and I can't wait to share them with you once I've worn them and share what we get up to um yeah really really exciting so I hope you've enjoyed everything today and um leave a comment below on who you want to make a pair of snugs for so whether it's yourself or whether you want to gift them let me know below I'm really really excited about this pattern and I will see you next time. Take care. Bye.